Hey everyone, and welcome back to Cosplay Sewing School. Today we are going to be discussing how to use scale proportion rulers to digitally draft an Edwardian shirt waist of this Lady Street costume. Now I found this draft in the Edwardian Modiste. That is a book, you can find it now, it's still in print, that has a number of fashion drafts that are originally from magazines from the Edwardian era. And you can also find these drafts all over the internet and they're super fun and a great way to make sure that you have gotten a period look because the patterns are actually what they would have used. If you don't have a set of scale proportion rulers that are digitized and you don't wanna deal with scanning them in and doing them yourself, I have digitized the rulers and made them available for the use for digital drafting as well as printable so that you can draft these on paper if you like to do the old school paper way. You can find those at my website at cosplaysewingschool.com and they are a super awesome deal at five bucks for both pattern systems. So let's go ahead and get started. The draft here that we're going to be using is this front piece. Now, there's several pieces of this if you wanted to draft the entire shirt waist. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna show you how to do the front. According to the directions here, it says that you need to select a bust and length of waist scales for the waist back and front. So what that means is you are going to be selecting a ruler based on your bust size. Now remember, this is your bust size in whatever undergarments you plan to be wearing. So in this case, my bust in my undergarments is 42. So I'm going to select the ruler labeled 42 inches because that's the one that corresponds to my bust size. If your bust is 36 inches, then you would select the 36 inch ruler. There is also centimeters on the rulers. If you go ahead and you get my rulers, you can see that. If you are between, if you are like 42 and a half, you can move up or down based on if you want to fit a little snugger or a little looser, that's totally up to you. But the way the rulers are designed, they don't offer half inch on those scales. I'm gonna be showing you how to do this using Adobe Illustrator. If you want to use other software, any vector software will pretty much work the same way. Uh, you can also do this in CAD. I just am not skilled in CAD, so I use Adobe Illustrator. We're gonna start out by making a new document. Go ahead and make that artboard a pretty nice size. I keep a custom 24 by 18, which is kind of my base and we are going to drag in the 42 inch ruler. Now, if you don't wanna drag in, you can do the file place method, but I just don't have to click as much this way. We are going to put that ruler on the top of our artboard. Go ahead and use the artboard tool to adjust the artboard to be a little wider, uh, and we'll continue to make adjustments to this later. So now we are going to copy and paste, Control C, Control V, and rotate that ruler to make it at a perpendicular angle. The goal is to make an L square, which is what you would do also on paper. So I'm gonna go back in to the artboard tool, and I am just gonna go ahead and make this a nice big artboard so we have plenty of space to work in and go back to the standard arrow select tool and we're going to go ahead and manipulate these rulers until we have them at a nice perfect zero zero mark. That is going to be our starting point for all of our measurements. I went ahead and turned on my rulers using the control R and now I am dragging some guides from the top and bottom and placing those there to create my zero zero mark. Go ahead and lock that layer so we can't move those rulers by accident and create a new layer. Now I am bringing in the front of the draft. I'm just doing this for visual reference here. We're not actually gonna copy and paste this. So let's just go ahead and make it a little bigger and bring it over here. That zero, zero mark that we made at the perpendicular points of those grids is going to match those zero, zero here. The numbers going down the right side align to the right-sided ruler. These are going to be our horizontal measurements. So we're going to go down 1B. Now, the spacing here is not in inches. This is going to be in units. The unit one, we go down to the one and then the B on the ruler. And those are actually eighth inch marks, but for some reason in this system, they use the letters instead of 
marks. Uh, it's just the way the system works. So we're going to have marks at the 1B and we're going to go to the left, 8B. So our top of the shoulder mark there is going to be at 1B down, 8B left. These are just drafting points. And so we would have 1B, 3, 3E, those are going down, 2E, 8B, those are going to the left. I'm going to start by creating a rectangle, and this is where I'm gonna build all of my points off of. And I am just gonna make a nice big old rectangle here and then adjust it here. So now I'm gonna press the V button to take me to my arrow select. And the widest part of this is 15, not 15 inches, 15 units up at the top. So I'm gonna make my rectangle 15 wide and I'm going to make sure my rectangle is aligned to that guide on the top and aligned to the guide on the right. And then we are going to go down. The bottom most point of this draft is 23A. So I am gonna go ahead and make my rectangle 23A long here and make sure that lines up nicely. And I forgot to put a stroke on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that line a little weight and I'm gonna change its color. It's just gonna make it easier to deal with having it a nice bright color. So let's select blue and go back and probably make that a little thicker so it's easier to look at. All right, so now we have the base rectangle for our draft. So the first point we're gonna have is we're gonna look at this neckline. We're gonna start with this two E here and the three there. So I'm gonna put some points on the rectangles at those points. We're gonna get that little space from three E to one B and one B over that way. So let's go ahead and make those. I'm gonna start by bringing in guides. The guides, you drag them from the top or from the left. And I've also gone into isolation mode on that rectangle, I just find it a little easier to see. I'm gonna press P for the pen tool after selecting the rectangle. And I'm gonna make sure that it has that little plus sign and I'm gonna put some points on this rectangle on the top and on the right. And those are gonna be points we manipulate to use in our draft. I'll also drag some guides to the left and from the top to go ahead and make that first point at 3D, 1B. And I'm starting there, I'm just going to grab the A key and pull that point down to the point where those guides meet. Next, let's move the guide up to three and to C, that is the next point, and I'm just gonna drag that corner point down. And the top is actually, I have that in the wrong space, so that goes to 2E. So I'm gonna take my guide to 2E, and I'm gonna move that top point there, and that gives us the neckline. Now, if for some reason your lines are not snapping, you can go ahead and make sure that the magnetic looking icon up on your top right is selected and that will make sure your guides are snapped. Now I'm gonna draft the shoulder area by pulling a guide down to 1B. And then we're also going to be placing a guide at 8B. So we're scooching over here. Now I'm holding the space bar to move to get the hand there. And let's drag a guide over here to 8. And so that point, we're just gonna press P and then A and move that point down and that is now the shoulder. So now I'm gonna make sure that I select that guide and we are moving that next guide down to seven and one half. And that point will also go on, so let's add a point here. And that point is gonna come down to 8B and seven and a half. And again, we will be fixing those later, those curves. So the next point is at 11A and seven and a half. So we'll make sure we drag those points there. Now we are going to be going to 13E on the top and 15D down 
here. I am not making new guides every time because the more guides I get, the more my eyeballs get confused. So I'm moving them constantly after I finish my points, which is why I kind of do this with the rectangle here. So we are going to 15D and we're going to make a point here and bring that to where those meet. Zoom out here, let's take a little look at what we've done so far. So now we have a good portion of that draft done. We're gonna go ahead and move the next guide to 15. And the, uh, here is 17D. And you can always zoom in and you can use your arrow keys to really refine that location. I'm gonna add a point here and move that there. And that is the bottom left corner of our draft. Now we're gonna go ahead and move this guide to 21 and a half and 8B. And I had left that 8B guide there because I had seen that that gets used multiple times. And the last point, that 23A, we already have because that was in our draft. So now we actually have the basic outline of our draft here on that front. So that was actually pretty easy. So I'm gonna delete a bunch of the guides because they are just visually in the way. So let's empty those, leave our base guides here. Now, the next thing we need to do is deal with the curvature. So pressing Shift C, you're going to get the point convert tool. And so if you hold the shift button down while you move that, you're gonna go ahead and be able to get that to be straight. And so I'm just gonna eyeball these curves here. And I'm just holding and expanding, pressing my mouse down, holding, and pulling those points how I want them. And we can always go back and refine them later. This is just a kind of a first run, a basic trial run. And here I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that one side of that stays straight. So by doing so, you can see the handle going straight along that line. And then we're gonna curve out the bottom here and I'm gonna pull those really far for a nice, pretty smooth curve. And we actually have the basic draft here. Inside of this draft, they actually have the seam allowances already in for certain spaces. Uh, so for instance, this says it is an E space. So what that means is that it is going to be E spaces inside of the ruler. So we're gonna start at zero and go to E and we're gonna measure how much that is. Now, I like to set up my own seam allowances on all of my patterns. So I'm going to actually show you how we are going to remove the seam allowance from the draft and then re-add it. So we're gonna measure this by using a rectangle. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag a rectangle out here, make the lines a little thinner just so we can see and check the size on that. So that's 1.0556. Um, I think I'm just gonna shave off that 0.6 there. Just doesn't make much difference. And we're gonna copy that. And we're gonna utilize that to make a new object. So we're gonna select our object and go to path and go to offset path. This is one of the most useful tools in Adobe Illustrator. So we're gonna say minus and paste that in there. And what that does is it now makes a path of that much distance smaller. So here now we have this. So this would represent if there was a full seam allowance the whole thing around, but there's not. So here's how we're going to fix that. We're gonna get just that left seam line. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and delete a few points here. And so I'm selecting the single point and pressing the delete key. And what I'm trying to do is to just get those two lines. This can be messy because we're gonna kill the other lines later. So I'm gonna go back to the V tool and I'm gonna double click into that and remove that line and remove that line. And now we are left with the two seams. So we're going to extend this out. And the goal here is to make sure we keep that at the same angle. So we're gonna match that up and extend that past the line. You're gonna see what we're gonna do here in a minute to cut that off. This is gonna be really cool. So we've gone ahead, we've extended that line. We're gonna do the same thing on the side seam. Make sure that you are in that point select tool. And coming down here, 
we're going to do the same thing here. This one will be a little more fussy. We just wanna make sure we get that curve correct. You may have to go back in and adjust curves, but the goal here is to just get that final last bit of seam allowance. So I am gonna zoom back out here, and then what we're gonna to have to do, these are made in a compound path, so we're gonna right click and release compound path, which is gonna separate them. So select the object and then go to the object menu, and then we're gonna to go to path, and we're going to go to divide objects below. What this is going to do is create two different objects based on that path. So select that one, delete it, and we have removed the seam allowance. We're gonna do the same thing here, object path, divide objects below. And now we have two objects, delete that. And so now we have zero seam allowances. The next thing we're gonna to have to do is deal with that one B hem that is on the center front. So to do that, we're just gonna come and zoom in here. I'm gonna delete that rectangle there. We don't need that anymore. And we are gonna put a guide at 1B. And so that is the distance that we're going to put that line. So I'm going to go ahead and we are just going to get the line tool here. And on that guide, we are gonna draw a nice long line. We'll go ahead and correct any distance issues later. Set a stroke. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this a dashed line. And in order to do that, you're going to, I'm gonna set the, set it, change its color first because I do like to color code my items. And I'm gonna change that stroke. I'm gonna click that stroke. And now we're gonna see here is there's a check mark over on the side, which is a little bit offside of the video, but we'll see that again later. And check mark the dashed line. And that is going to give me now a dashed line. I'm gonna delete that guide so I can see it. And then you can refine your line so that it stays within the bounds as possible. So now we have our 1B hem. A couple other things we need. We need the waistline and we're gonna need that gather line. First, we're gonna take care of the waistline. We are going to put that at 15 deep. So let's go ahead and get a guide and put that guide at 15 D. And we'll zoom back out here and we will get our line tool and just go ahead and put a line there. And you can hold the shift key to make sure it stays straight. And I put it a little bit above the guide. It was trying to stick to the guide and I couldn't get it to do what it needed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and see that check mark there. That's that dashed line. Change this color to purple just because I know these are not cutting lines. So again, like I said, I like to color code mine a little bit because it makes it easier to read. I'm just gonna select that and move that down to match that guide and refine the width on that. Remove that guide. And now we have the waistline. Okay, so now we need to do the gather line. So we're gonna put a guide at 18F and another guide at 6E. All right, so we have that point there. And we know that what we're going to be using is we're gonna go from the waistline to that point to, we need another guide at 20A. And this time we're gonna go ahead and use the pen tool. So we're gonna press P for pen, and we're gonna start making lines. I'm gonna start on the right side because if I start on the left side with that waist, it's gonna to try to complete that line. And so I'm gonna click, click, click and I am not gonna click to that line. See, it wants to join those two. So I'm just gonna click down there. I'm gonna go ahead and press escape. I'm gonna click that line and set a stroke to the line. Adjust its color. And go ahead and make it a dashed line. And then I'm just gonna come back in with that point select tool. I'm gonna press A and move it to meet the other line. Last thing we're going to do is remove the guides and then we are going to press shift C and refine the curve on that. And so we're just gonna zoom out and try and match up that curve from the M. There we go. All right, so now what's left? We need to go ahead and add text and seam allowances. So to do the text, we're just gonna take the text tool, just click in there. I'm just gonna start and type front. 
go ahead and do the select tool. We're gonna make it nice and big. I'm just holding shift. So let's go ahead and put, I always label the size. This is a size 42 bust and how many I should cut. Now you can always add more labeling. This is the bare bones minimum. Go ahead and move that out of the way. And let's go ahead and mark our waist. So I'm just copying, pasting here, typing in waist. And I wanna make that a little smaller just because it makes more sense. And we're gonna move that down near to the waist. Next thing, Control C, Control V. We're going to mark the gathering line. So we'll hit gather. And we're just gonna turn that a little bit to make it look nice. And the last thing we need to do after we place that is to mark the hem there. And I know that is actually the center front. So I always use capital C, capital F for center front. So this is actually center front slash fold line, meaning this is where I'm going to fold it. Uh, I like to mark my patterns a little differently than the originals were marked, which is fine. You're drafting the pattern, that's for you. So now we have nearly everything done. The last thing we are going to do is we are going to put seam allowances on. So I'm gonna select the outer outline and I'm gonna to go to object, path, offset path. And what I'm gonna do here is set this to positive 0.5 inches. That's going to put surrounding border of 0.5 inches away. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change that to black. I always make my cutting lines black and I'm gonna go ahead and make that one point so that it is very accurate. There we go. Now, we do have a little problem on this right side in that we didn't need to add any more seam allowance there. So we're gonna go ahead and select our line tool, draw a line down that right side along that guide, and then go back, select the line, and do object, path, divide objects below. Now we can select that little extra there and boom, it is gone. So now we have a finished pattern that we have drafted. And honestly, once you do this a couple of times, it becomes very quick, very fast. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up my artboard here, remove all the extra business, remove my guides, and I'm gonna go ahead and group that piece and slim up my artboard here because we are gonna get ready for printing. Thanks so much for watching my video. Be sure to check back for part two of this video where I will teach you how to make this a tiled printable file that you can print on your printer at home and then reassemble. Thanks again and be sure to check out my other videos. Hit that subscribe button down below to get notified when new videos come out and check out my website www.cosplaysewingschool.com and don't forget you can buy those scale proportion rulers on my website. You get two systems worth for five bucks. Thanks so much.